Welcome to the We On podcast, where we explore fascinating stories and ideas from various fields. In this episode, we go back to a Cold War moment that changed everything. Looking at the R7 Sapwood and revealing how the Soviet Union built its first intercontinental ballistic missile, an invention that wasn't just a weapon, but the spark that launched the missile age and the space race. The Soviet R-7 missile, known by its NATO reporting name SS-6 Sapwood, holds the distinction of being the first intercontinental ballistic missile, or ICBM, to be tested. On August 21, 1957, the USSR conducted the first ever completely successful ICBM launch, when a prototype of the R-7 missile delivered a dummy warhead of about 5,600 kilometers from the launch site. The rocket's successful test from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan marked the first time a missile had achieved true intercontinental range. This achievement not only had major military implications, but also fueled competition in both strategic weapons and space exploration. The R-7 program began in the early 1950s under the direction of Soviet rocket designer Sergei Korolev, with the aim of creating a missile capable of delivering a heavy thermonuclear warhead to distant targets. According to the Federation of American Scientists, it was a one and one-half stage cryogenic liquid propellant missile, which was estimated to be capable of delivering a 9,000 pounds re-entry vehicle to a maximum operational range of 6,500 nanometer with a CP of approximately 2 nanometer. Flight testing of the R-7 began in May 1957 and initial launches revealed significant technical challenges, including booster separation issues and stability problems. Nevertheless, on August 21, 1957, the missile completed its first long-range flight, reaching over 6,000 kilometers before the dummy warhead disintegrated on re-entry. A second successful test followed shortly afterward. Although the original R-7 concept was never widely fielded as an operational weapon, a refined variant known as the R-7A later entered service in 1960. This version had a lighter warhead and improved guidance systems, and 28 test launches were conducted before its retirement in 1968, according to Wikipedia. The main operational base for R-7A missiles was the Plesetsk Cosmodrome, located in northern Russia. Beyond its military origin, the R-7 rocket family became deeply associated with space exploration. An unmodified R-7 was used to launch Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite, on October 4, 1957, and variants later placed the first human, Yuri Gagarin, into orbit in 1961. The late 1950s saw the development of the first ICBMs accelerate as the arms race heated up as after the Soviets tested R-7. The National Park Service states that in 1959, SM-65 Atlas missile became the United States' first viable ICBM. Deployed between 1959 and 1965 at Air Force bases from New York State to New Mexico, it was ground-launched, liquid-fueled, ballistic missile that existed in three variants, Atlas D, E, and F. Despite incremental improvements, the Atlas program was very short-lived, as its liquid fuel was highly volatile, leading to its retirement after just six years. Despite its pioneering status, the R-7 was problematic as a strategic weapon. Its large launch complexes were vulnerable to attack, and the rocket took many hours to prepare for launch, limiting its readiness in a nuclear confrontation. These constraints prompted the development of more responsive missile systems in the 1960s. Thanks for tuning into this incredible story. If this episode resonated with you, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for more captivating stories to come. Stay tuned.